Well, I'm Gray Brecken, and I'm the visiting scholar here in the Geography Department. Um, I'm the founder of the Living New Deal, which is based here in the Geography Department at UC Berkeley. And we are inventorying and mapping um, the entire physical legacy of the New Deal in California. Wow. Uh, and I am a three-time alumnus of the University of California. I first came to Cal as an undergraduate in 1967. I got my BA, my MA, and my PhD here at Berkeley. Well, I've only gotten a few photographs, and, and, um, but I'm more interested in the ones that were omitted, and I'll talk about that later on. Um, but one of them is of a physics student, a young physics student at UC Riverside, and I thought that the way that Adam shot him was quite interesting because he's very clean cut and very kind of dour and staring straight at, out at you. He's a bit severe, and he's boxed in by his background of concrete. And I don't know whether Adams did that deliberately, um, because for me it represents the degree to which the young people, the young men, were recruited into doing nuclear research at the University of California at that time, and the problem that it represented for the university, because its involvement with nuclear weaponry and technology has always presented it with a, a real public relations problem with the public. Um, how do you, um, first how do you recruit such people and then how do you explain to the public why a public university is involved in developing and promoting omnicidal weapons. And so um, what the university has done is to um, not talk about that as much as possible, to just not address that. And what it seems to me um, happened is that um, Adams and uh, Newhall got with the program. They really didn't address it, except in a very positive kind of way. So that brings me to the photographs that they didn't shoot, because I think that that's really more important than the ones that they did. Um, there is only this glancing mention of the Manhattan Project. Um, there's no mention of Los Alamos, the campus at Los Alamos. This is the only photograph of the campus at Livermore. Um, and it's a close-up of a machine. It's not a landscape. It's not buildings. It's not the people that are there. So uh, you have something very serious omitted. Two of the major campuses of the university, which the regents don't like to be talked about as campuses on a par with, at that time, the other nine. But if you go to the university headquarters in Oakland, you'll see that they are actually featured with equal prominence of the other university campuses. So they are campuses, but they're devoted to something rather different. Now, what uh, Newhall does talk about, again, at great length, like the university does, is the heroic figure of its first Nobel laureate, Ernest Lawrence, um, and all the cyclotrons that he built and the kind of heroic march of the discovery of transuranic elements. But she doesn't mention one J. Robert Oppenheimer, which is interesting because Oppenheimer was by all considered to be the far greater physicist and one of the greatest physicists of the 20th century who did so much of his work here at Berkeley. But he's completely out of the picture. And so, again, I think that uh, that is probably because everybody associates J. Robert Oppenheimer in their minds with the atomic bomb, and they didn't want to do that. Now, the photograph, again, that they did not include um, would have been a photograph of the university's star physicists and regents joining the generals and the politicians in the Marshall Islands on Adirondack chairs with sunglasses watching thermonuclear fireballs vaporize millions of tons of seawater and coral and gusher it into the jet stream to be broadcast all over the planet. The military shot that, those photographs, but they're not in the, photo, in the book, obviously, because they're not Ansel Adams' photographs. But those photographs are very, very telling. Because Adams also shot Ernest Lawrence's brother, Dr. John Lawrence, using carefully controlled radiation to fight cancer. So you get the idea that the radioactivity is a benign thing. You can keep it under control. There's no mention of this vast, uncontrolled experiment um, of the nuclear tests and the de degree to which 
the entire planet was contaminated in short order with long-lasting carcinogens. This was, but of course, you don't expect that in a book like this because it really is kind of a commercial production. It is, of course, to put the university in its best light. Um, what disappoints me is, as I said, that Ansel Adams and Nancy Newhall got with the program. Magnificent photograph looking out the Golden Gate with the campus down below. You can see the axis that John Galen Howard laid out to the Golden Gate that the university, the central campus, is organized along. It's taken from very close to the 184-inch cyclotron at the top of the hill that Lawrence had built. And I can't help but thinking about what John Galen Howard said in, I think it was 1903, when he dedicated the Hearst Mining Building. And he said that the axis stands for alma mater's peaceful and beneficent conquest of the Pacific Ocean. And it was in that 184-inch cyclotron that Lawrence began to separate U-235, some of which was used on the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. So there is a kind of a macabre irony about that photograph, again, which Ansel Adams would not have been aware of at the time. 